You know guys, one of the most common questions I get is, Doc, what about stretching? Should I stretch? How much should I stretch? How flexible should I be? Well, I decided to shoot a brief series to introduce you to some profound concepts around stretching versus range of motion, and that's what we're getting started with today. So today I want to talk about this question, why are you stretching in the first place? Now, I'm holding this ball to remind you of a previous blog that we shot where we worked on sh uh, Shannon's shoulder range of motion, and we're going to put a link because I want you to go back and watch that particular blog because it does reference some very important information with regards to this topic. So now that you've seen this, I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> now, the next thing that I want you to think about is that question, why are you stretching? Most people don't stretch just because they like the feel of stretching. Now, some do. And if that's you, fine, I'm not, I'm not talking to you right now. Most people stretch because they want to achieve something. I am a lifelong martial artist, and in the uh, martial arts world, having a high degree of flexibility and be able to do the splits and all this stuff was always really cool. And so a lot of people would stretch, but they were stretching not because they wanted to feel the stretch, but because they wanted to achieve the splits. A lot of people do hamstring stretching, not because they love the feeling of stretching their hamstrings, but because they want to be able to comfortably bend over and tie their shoes or put their hands on the floor. Now, why this is really important is some emerging science around flexibility versus range of motion training. All right, so that's what we're actually going to discuss in this video to set you up for what's coming next, because this is kind of a profound idea and it may make your life a lot easier. So here we go. We need to talk about what's called an EMG first. All right, an EMG is when I put electrodes on a muscle and then I make you contract or do something with the body and I can measure how hard the muscle is working. Okay, that's kind of simplified, but that's how it works. Now, if we take two different types of athletes, we take a bodybuilder and a field sport athlete, and we measure uh, activity, there's a couple of very interesting things that go on. Now, if I have someone and I say, okay, I'm gonna put the pads on you and I want you to do a biceps curl, and they start doing a curl, and I say, think hard about the muscle, think hard about making it contract, really take in internal focus focus on what you're feeling, what we see with the EMG is that the activity goes up. This is old school bodybuilding from, for years and years and years where really strong big guys would say, hey, if you want to get stronger and bigger, think about the muscle. All right, think about it. Try and make it contract harder. Conversely, if I take a, a field sport athlete and I say, hey, let's do some measurements of your arm as you're throwing or as you're maybe grappling with somebody or whatever, that athlete is not focused on the contraction. Instead, they're focused on something external. And if we do EMG on them, all right, what we find is that the activity of that muscle is actually lower. Now, as a field sport athlete, that's awesome because your primary goal is efficiency, not maximum tension. So we have a really big difference between an internal focus and an external focus with regards to what happens inside the muscle. Now, with that said, let's go back to why are you stretching? If you're stretching in order to achieve a range of motion, what we want to do is we want to improve your efficiency at achieving that range of motion. We don't want you to focus internally because what happens is, let's say I'm trying to palm the floor, if I really start working on my flexibility, when people think, hey, I'm going to stretch, what do they think? They think about the muscle itself. So they bend over and they start stretching and they're like, oh, I really feel it and it's really tied up by my pelvis and now it's tied down by my knee. And that internal focus actually increases internal activity in the muscle, hence making things harder and tighter. So what we're going to show you in a couple of videos that are coming is how to use, again, more external focus to achieve your ranges of motion. And this is, the, again, the big thought for the day. We've spent a lot of time in Z-Health working on mobility to achieve better range of motion. Again, the whole goal of better range of motion is to achieve certain things that are of interest to us. Maybe I want to be able to hit a better tennis serve. Maybe I want to be able to bend over without uh, bending my knees and tie my shoes. I don't, I don't know what your goals are, but what I can tell you again from research is that if we get an external focus, you're going to achieve your range of motion goals more quickly than with an internal focus. So if you have questions about this, let us know. This is again, a pretty controversial topic. A lot of people get excited when it comes to flexibility and range of motion training. So if you have questions about, it, about this, let us know. Otherwise, stay tuned for the videos that are coming to show you how to implement this in the real world. Thanks.
of exercises and ideas that I think you're going to love. <laughs> One more time. That was, that was really good right up until, right up until I forgot. I had no idea what else I should say. Reshoot. <laughs>